Hi, I'm Mark Hellyer, and in the next seven minutes I'll explain the four essential elements of language learning to you and show you the best way to improve your English for free. Now before we go any further, what do I know? Well, I'm a linguist and I've been involved in language learning and teaching for over 30 years, so I promise you I know what I'm talking about. The first thing to say is that there are no shortcuts. You can't wave a magic wand and learn English in two weeks or four weeks or six weeks or anything like that. Learning English, or any other language for that matter, requires a lot of time. Think about how long it took you to learn your first language. Where language learning is concerned, there is no easy button to press. However, what you can do is work smarter, not harder, as the saying goes. And that means channeling your efforts so that they are more effective. And this is where I can give you some helpful tips. I'm going to tell you the four most important factors in language learning and then show you how 10 or 15 minutes of the right kind of English every day can really help you learn the language. Being a successful language learner comes down to four basic requirements. One, motivation. Two, exposure. Three, memory. And four, engagement. Now here's a quick way to remember this. Take Einstein's famous equation, E equals MC squared. If we add an L, that stands for learning English. And if we make the C into an E, that gives us LE equals ME squared, which stands for learning English equals motivation plus exposure times memory plus engagement. Okay, now let's start with motivation. First of all, motivation is not the same as motive. Your motive, or reason for learning English, might be to get a better job. But your motivation is the energy, the drive and the effort you put into learning, and that has to come from you. Once you physically get yourself to a language class, motivation isn't a problem, because it's the teacher who actually provides it. He or she asks you questions, sets you tasks, and gets you listening and speaking, reading and writing. It's when you're not in a language class, and that's most of the time, that motivation is the problem. It has to come from within you, and that's often the most difficult part about learning a foreign language, a lack of self-motivation. Now let's move on to exposure. By this, of course, I mean exposure to the language. Without regular exposure to the language, you won't make any improvement. Now, 20 or 30 years ago, this in itself would have been a problem. It wasn't at all easy to get regular exposure to written or spoken English if you weren't in an English-speaking country. But with global access to the internet, things are completely different now. English in all its forms is accessible everywhere, 24 hours a day, and of course it's free. The problem now is deciding which English is useful for you. And here the magic words are comprehensible input. Now what does that mean? Well, exactly what it says. For the language to be useful, you have to be able to understand the meaning it conveys. If you're a beginner, just listening to a radio broadcast of someone speaking at normal speed about a subject you know nothing about is not going to help you improve. In fact, it would probably be quite frustrating and demotivating. So as a learner, you need help with understanding meaning. And this is why language classes are initially very useful because you're listening to a teacher who's providing lots of help to make sure you understand what they're saying. The teacher speaks clearly and slowly, repeats things, uses hand gestures and other visual aids, etc. The problem is that going to a language class once or twice a week does not provide enough comprehensible input, so progress is very slow and often results in learners giving up. Learners sometimes tell themselves that this is because they're just no good at languages, or that the teacher wasn't very good. But the real reason is simply they're not getting enough exposure to the language, not enough comprehensible input. The third requirement for language learning is memory. Without memory, there is no learning, and research suggests that we forget a massive 75% of what we learn after just 48 hours. So if you can't memorize things, a great deal of the time you spend studying will be wasted. So the question is, how do we memorise things best? And the answer to this is through emotional connections and repetition. We are much more likely to remember words if we read or hear them in some meaningful way, such as in a story, or in a joke, or in an interesting fact, or in the lyrics of a song. And we are much more likely to remember words we hear frequently, 
so spaced repetition is also important. That brings us to the fourth and final requirement, which is engagement. Now what does that mean? Well, it means connecting with the language, which can only happen when you're genuinely interested in what you're reading or listening to. So if you're interested in skateboarding, for example, read about skateboarding. If you're not, don't. Only you know what really interests you. It may be music, cars, rock climbing, or anything else. But whatever your interests are, read about them in the language you're trying to learn. That way you'll be engaged, which will help your memory and your motivation. So most unsuccessful language learners are simply not getting enough exposure to the language, not getting the right kind of exposure, and not getting it frequently enough. Now with all of this in mind, I started the Daily Trivia blog. The idea is to provide a very small amount of English, between 150 and 250 words, which you can read quickly and regularly, and of course which you can understand. Each post has an image of the day, events from history which happened on that day, a quote of the day, and a random fact. I've also chosen a song for each week, and this selection is based on the lyrics of the song and how clear they are. The idea is for you to get into the habit of regularly reading and listening to short bits of meaningful English on a variety of subjects, which is much better than trying to learn lists of words or grammar rules without any real context. And of course, you can leave comments on anything you read. Ultimately, language learning is not about attending a class and having the teacher magically transfer the language into your head. It's about you developing behaviour that gives you regular exposure to the right kind of language. So check out dailytrivia.weebly.com, get into the habit of reading it every day, and leave me a comment to let me know what you think. OK, thanks for listening, and I hope you found this useful.